Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon Geeky Sparkles sending this video out, but we're gonna talk about comic shops and Funko Pops and Funko's in trouble. Uh, they're in big trouble. And I, I was kind of wondering when this was going to happen that we're looking at the uh, Funko implosion. I think we're gonna talk about Funko's numbers and layoffs and uh, Funko Pops getting destroyed rather than sold. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, Funko Pops in relation to comic shops and how it seems like they're they're basically propping up a lot of comic shops now. I had to post this though. Uh, I just thought it was funny. This is actually coming from uh, our distributor that they're going to have new Harry Potter bitty pops and I have to wonder, you know, where's all the outrage? Why aren't people boycotting Funko? Why aren't they boycotting Lego? Why is it just Hogwarts Legacy? I don't know. Uh, it seems like it's off the radar, right? So we're going to talk about Funko. Uh, Funko swinging to loss, uh, laying people off, trashing inventory. They're destroying inventory rather than flood the market. But then we'll talk about that too, that the inventory is up, but the chains are canceling orders. People aren't buying as many Funko Pops, apparently. And, and the thing is, is the Funko Pops have kind of propped up comic shops for... The last several years now, you go to a comic book convention, you're going to see walls and walls and walls of Funko Pops. You'll probably notice the Funko Pops before you notice the comic books. It's just kind of how it's been. So we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 296, almost 300,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Please subscribe. We're trying to get the 300,000 sometime soon. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, the bell, all that stuff. Make sure you're still subscribed. We do talk about comic book news. We talk about pop culture news. And uh, it's hard to talk about pop culture these days without talking about Funko. Uh, Funko has been kind of single-handedly propping up the, the geek market for a couple of years now, it seems like. You know, probably not entirely true, but uh, look, it's all over the place. Funko stuff is all over the place. And I remember when they were small. I remember when they were kind of like a uh, kind of a boutique niche thing, kind of like Super 7. I guess Super 7 is not that small anymore either. But, you know, Funko Pops weren't as prevalent as they are now. I mean, anywhere you go, there's like freaking every TV show's got Funko Pops of every damn character. Uh, even characters you didn't even recognize at, you know, 10 $15 a piece. And uh, yeah, it looks like the looks like the bubble's going to burst here pretty soon. I just want to point out that a lot of comic shops are closing. A lot of comic shops are closing. Now, if you listen to Bleeding Cool, lots more comic shops are opening, but it turns out that a lot of them are, are like uh, flea market stalls or something. I don't know. <laughs> but a lot of comic shops, unfortunately, are closing. The ones that have weathered the storm tend to be stores that sell other stuff other than new comic books. They deal in manga. They deal heavily in back issues. They deal in tabletop games. And of course, they deal in Funko Pops. And if you kick that leg out from underneath the table too, if you're already down new comic books, new floppy comics, because people aren't buying them like they used to and the prices are going to go up again and that's probably going to hurt sales too, then you have to rely on other things. And uh, let's see, you're kicking the leg out from underneath Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering because people are angry about them. And now you're kicking the other leg out, which is Funko Pops. So let's talk about uh, Funko Pops. According to ICV2, uh, Funko swings to loss. They're planning layoffs. They're trashing their inventory. Uh, they swung to a loss for Q4 and the full year of 2022 and plans to cut staff and trash inventory to turn things around. Uh, things turned south hard in Q3 as inventory nearly doubled, margins declined, and the company experienced problems at its new distribution center. So let's go back to this other story. Funko inventory up, uh, chains canceling orders due to broader economic climate right before Christmas too. I think people would give the gift of Funko. They said that uh, Funko reported sharply higher inventory with mass chains delaying or canceling orders. That would be like Walmart and Target. Uh, in its Q3 report and conference call citing the broader economic climate, macroeconomic circumstances. Funko's inventory at the end of Q3 was $265.8 million, up 89%. Wow. From $140 million at the end of Q3 2021. While management noted that inventory was particularly tight at the end of Q3 2021 due to supply chain constraints, uh, Funko CFO Jennifer Fall Jung 
uh, acknowledged in the conference call that with the big jump in inventory, they might have to do a little discounting in Q4 to manage uh, to manage it down. Manage the it to manage the it down. Hmm. Uh, gross margin was already down 100 basis points. Uh, Funko's having problems with its new consolidated fulfillment center, which opened in Q2. The warehouse management software it expected to have available to manage its new warehouse was not installed by the time the warehouse opened. Um, Funko's challenges in Q3 led to a decline in net income of 39% to 11.1 million from 18.4 million the year ago period, despite a 37% sales increase. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so they were hoping things were going to get better, right? And it looks like they haven't. So yeah, uh, company founder Brian Mariotti returned as CEO in December, displacing Andrew Perlmutter and announced the hiring of former Walmart.com CEO Steve Nave as COO and CFO. COO role, role is a new position and as a CFO Nave will replace former CFO Jennifer Paul Jung, who left in December after Q3 missed the mark. It was clear on our last earnings call that the business and our operations hit an inflection point. A combination of macro factors and Funko's specific issues have disrupted our financial and operating performance to unacceptable, an unacceptable degree. Could it be that the bubble is going to burst? Could it be that um, this is the end of the line for Funko Pops? Could it be that the market is completely saturated and people are over it? I kind of wondered how long it would take for people to just be done with Funko Pops, kind of like Beanie Babies, but I don't know, guys. The medicine for the company's situation will be bitter, including a 10% reduction in workforce, other cost cuts, and the destruction of 30 to $36 million worth of excess inventory, executives reported. Oh my God. Uh, you're not going to send them to Ollie's. You're just going to destroy them. The loss for Q4 was a whopping $46.7 million, a big swing from a $17.4 million profit in the year-ago period. Special events include a $33 million write-down of capitalized costs related to the company's change to a new strategy for its uh, ERP and warehouse management software. The company has moved the implementation date uh, for the new software from 2023 to 2024. Hang in there, guys. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. It says it will be able to implement new warehouse management in 2023, helping to alleviate costs. Maybe make fewer Funko Pops of characters people actually want. I don't know. Should I be the CEO? Make fewer Funko Pops, but make characters that people actually want to buy. The company's new Arizona distribution center, which opened in 2022, figured prominently in the call. The center is so flooded with inventory that the company's rental fees for... Oh my God. The center is so flooded with inventory that the company's rental fees for shipping containers, which it used to store inventory that didn't fit in the building, were called out as a major impact on Q4 expenses. The company also endured chargebacks from its customers to support inventory reduction in the period. So there are so many damn Funko Pops, unsold Funko Pops, that a huge expense for them was buying shipping containers to store all the Funko Pops in. I'm just saying, somebody got a little too big for their britches, I think. Uh, U.S. Q4 sales were down 4.7% to $241 million. From 253 million in the year ago period, while the company wide sales were down more, a more modest 1% overall. Yeah, this is a problem. There's way too many, way too many Funko Pops. They don't know what to do with them. They're going to trash the inventory. Yeah, this might be the end, guys. So I guess my question is if Funko implodes, which I, I heard before that they were like on the verge of bankruptcy or something, that was, that was a couple of years ago. So I'm surprised that, you know, they're still making as much as they are. I kind of liked it better when they were just kind of making like niche collectibles. But um, yeah, um, if Funko implodes, right, and Funko Pops go bye bye, where does that leave a lot of comic shops? I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, a lot of retailers, in fact, uh, one I just spoke to a couple of weeks ago who has a game shop. Um, he was telling me about the situation with Magic the Gathering and how, you know, they basically relied on magic sales to kind of keep the keep the shop afloat. And that's not working out very well either. In fact, somebody told me that they found a whole bunch of uh, Magic the Gathering cards uh, in a lake or something. Yeah, I can't find anything on mainstream news about it, but this is coming from uh, MTG Goldfish that there were $200,000 worth of sealed Magic cards found in a dump. In a dump. I mean, this is crazy. So 
again, this kind of kind of goes back to what Hasbro is dealing with too, where they overproduce magic cards. And magic cards and Funko Pops are kind of propping up the the quote unquote comic book industry. Magic cards, Funko Pops, and manga are propping up the Western comic book industry. Now, that doesn't that sentence doesn't even make sense, does it? So what happens if you again kick these legs out from underneath the table? Does it all come crashing down? I don't know. I don't know, guys, but uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.